The soldiers who built these walls worked to a number of designs. These could vary from a simple double wall to a virtual castle with a maze-like format to enable a small detachment of defending forces to control any attempt at an invasion by a much larger attacking force. One good example of the Chinese successfully fending off a Mongol raid at the wall was the raid of 1554, which happened about 10 or 15 kilometers west of here. On October 23, 1554, thousands of Mongols attacked that point. Uh, at that time, the Chinese had good intelligence. They knew where the raid was going to happen, and they were able to fend off the, the Mongol surges. Uh, what the Mongols did was then proceed further along the wall uh, toward us here, trying to find a spot to get in. They were unsuccessful, and they really had no choice after a few days but to just pack up and go. China depended for its survival on feeding itself through agriculture. The farmers south of the Great Wall depended on it for protection from the much more mobile peoples to the north. The line of the Great Wall just parallels the line of the dividing line between the horse riding people and the so called farming people. So, in order to protect the farming people from the invasions of the horse riding people, China built this Great Wall. Of Chinese history, it played a very important role. It protected the agriculture and Chinese culture. Developments in design and building techniques on the Great Wall were mostly inspired by the response of China's military to new threats of invasion. As these changed with new weapons and strategies, so the wall had to become a more solid and ingenious structure. Then in the late 1570s, uh, there was another raid in this section, and there was wall rebuilt uh, here um, out of brick. Um, this is a very small project, and it was just done in this selected area because it was a hot spot during the Ming Dynasty for raids. The reason it was a hot spot is basically geographic. We're not far from a river valley here, and that was a very attractive route for large raiding parties of Mongols uh, to come through and try to enter the Beijing area. Every day, Thousands of tourists take a piece of this imposing monument back with them in their holiday snapshots. But in the outlying areas of Shanxi province, under the less conspicuous shadow of the Great Wall, people have been literally taking pieces of the wall to build their homes for many years. This little village named Victory Castle, close to the border with Inner Mongolia, owes its existence to the stones of the Great Wall. The laughter of the village children echoes from the bricks taken from China's most prized cultural treasure. The huge dirt mounds near the village are actually remnants of the wall. After centuries, what we see is barely a ghost of the monument's former glory. Village life seems to pass it by without a second glance. There are no tour guides here, no postcard vendors, no photographers. The Great Wall has blended in with the landscape and with the lives of the people living in its shadow. The Great Wall has been here for a very long time. Even the most recent Ming Great Wall is four to five hundred years old. Earlier Great Walls are one thousand to two thousand years old. In the past, when our country was in poverty and poorly managed, commoners demolished parts of the Great Wall for building materials. Bulldozed to make way for highways, and its bricks turned into building blocks, the Great Wall is now threatened by the very people it was meant to protect.
Surveys show that only a fifth of the entire wall is fully intact, and much of it is deemed to be in ruins. Around a half has disappeared altogether, and it's still under threat. In recent times, it's humans that have been damaging the Great Wall more. Those who don't appreciate its historical value won't be keen on protecting it. Driven by economic interests, they cause damage. In 2002, the Great Wall was put on the list of the world's 100 most endangered sites. It was built to protect China, but now China must protect the wall. The Great Wall is part of China's lifeblood. Every day, thousands of people see the wall for the first time. The income from tourism is huge. With more than 350 miles of wall in the greater Beijing area, it draws people from every corner of the earth who can say they set foot on the Great Wall. After 2,000 years, it still never fails to impress. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> so you can see it from down the road, and it's like, and it is, it is very impressive, right? Yeah. That's what I've seen so far, and it's like, so. Yeah. Also saw that it would be very impressive, and it is, and yeah, it's a great place. Very, uh, yeah, fantastic. Because if you're in Beijing, then it's your duty to go there, more or less. Because yeah. I think it's one of the main sites, especially for Western people. Yeah. Formerly a defensive barrier, the Great Wall has become a modern pilgrimage site for curious tourists, history buffs, and adventurers. An ancient monument, but also one that continues to inspire new traditions. There's even a televised game show that takes athletes on a massive endurance challenge. Known as one of the toughest marathons in the world, the grueling race slows even the fittest down to a crawl on the steepest of its 3,700 steps. For athletes, it's the ultimate challenge. For scholars, the Great Wall is a treasure trove of history. For China, it served as a defensive barrier, a political icon, and most of all, a source of national pride. Our ancestors built a great cultural landmark for all of mankind. They used their intelligence and wisdom, as well as their diligence and bravery. Whenever foreigners talk about the Great Wall, we will feel really proud. Proud of our ancestors for the miracle that they created. This magnificent creation is the product of the collective effort of the Chinese people. It's a symbol of perseverance, endurance, and ultimately triumph. It united the country in its construction, and it continues to unite the people today as a reminder of their ancestors' achievements. <laughs>